Selection Sunday. The decisions made and the college football playoff matchups will be Alabama and Notre Dame in the Rose Bowl. They'll play that game in Dallas. Clemson and Ohio State in the Sugar Bowl, as usual in New Orleans. It's the third time that Alabama has gone wire to wire atop the college football playoff rankings in a season. And you see how it broke down there with Texas A&M at five, Oklahoma at six. And here they are. Those who have been covering it for us all through the season, Heather Dinich and Paul Feinbaum getting up early for us here. Heather, I texted you during the Saturday night, uh, during the Clemson-Notre Dame game, and I said, could Notre Dame get blown right out of this playoff? And we were sort of speculating whether or not it could happen. Why didn't it? Why did the committee leave them in at four? Because everyone has to remember that it is the entire body of work. We tend to get wrapped up in the moment. Oh my gosh, they got blown out. This is terrible. But the previous 10 games, including a win earlier in November against the top four Clemson team, that still counts. Yes, the committee absolutely reconsidered that win after what they saw on Saturday and recognized that it was a totally different game against a totally different Clemson team. But they still give them credit for the win as a win on the road against the top 15 North Carolina team. At the end of the day, this committee, whether you agree with the picks or not, used its protocol. Strength of schedule is one of them. And the Irish beat the Aggies in that aspect in that committee meeting room. So, Paul, that was the decision they made. Was it the right one? It was the right one, but it was not a a good choice at all because Greeny, neither choice was really very good. I mean, you could have done the same thing with Ohio State. This committee uh, used the protocol. They they had one significant win uh, of the two, and it was, as Heather says, uh, the the Notre Dame win against Clemson. That trumped everything else. Uh, A&M did not have a really good cause. I mean, they play in a great league, but uh, their their signature win was over Florida, which suffered its third loss of the season. And, you know, let's not think that this committee doesn't also think about the matchups. I believe they do. And would, as they were discussing it, I'm sure somebody was thinking to themselves, they may not have said it out loud, do we really want to see Alabama and Texas A&M in the national semifinal? We, we see that game every year in the SEC. We've already seen it this year. Or do we want to see Alabama and Notre Dame, the two greatest programs in college football history? We have our answer. Yeah, we got, we got the four brand names in there, right? There's no question of that. It's Bama and Clemson and Ohio State who have been the, the preeminent programs in the sport in recent years, and then Notre Dame which, with all of that history and everything else. The Ohio State of it all, Heather, was the other thing everyone was talking about. So much talk amongst other coaches, Brian Kelly, Dabo Sweeney, about how they only played six games. In the end, how much difference did that wind up making in the room? They have been talking about unbalanced schedules from the start of these rankings. They knew, every committee member knew going into this, that this was going to be the most difficult season because of that reason. But at the end of the day, that championship mattered tremendously to them. They watched that game, and then after it was over, they went back into their meeting room because there was a break between the next game, and they started to deliberate it. And they noticed that Ohio State continues to find a way to win. They were out. 22 people, including starting wide receiver Chris Olave, they gave him credit for that title. So, Paul, I'll ask you the same question. Does Ohio State, having played just six games, do they belong in this playoff? They do, Greeny, and, and this is 2020, and I know that's an excuse for everything good or bad, but you have to look at the big picture. And it wasn't Ryan Day's fault, and it wasn't Justin Fields' fault that they didn't start playing until late October. That was the conference's fault. And we don't have time to go back through all the the mistakes that the Big Ten made, but Ryan Day and his team made the most out of it, and they they deserve credit. By the way, they wanted to play the whole season. It wasn't like they were saying, we don't don't really like the uh, the optics here. Uh, They were demanding to play. And and I think they were were, were rewarded for that, and they should have been, because they they are, in my opinion, uh, obviously the committee is as well, one of the top four teams in the country. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.